Hello to all the folks who've joined on time. Thank you so much. Uh, we will be getting started shortly. We're going to allow uh, some stragglers to trickle in. We've got a decent crowd today, and we want to make sure that everyone has that opportunity uh, to get the most from this amazing presentation from MNI. So sit tight, and we'll get started shortly. Okay, it looks like we have reached critical mass. I'd like to welcome everybody to this webinar. I'm Matt McDermott. I am uh, president of the AAF Baltimore, and I'd like to thank all of you for joining. I'd like to thank MNI, uh, our sponsor for this, uh, for this webinar, for pulling together uh, what we expect will be an amazingly insightful presentation uh, on B2B strategies in uncertain times for sure. Um, I'd like to remind everyone that the AAF Baltimore serves the entire communications community from marketing to design, print, media, and we are always looking for new members to support. Uh, we regularly are putting on uh, thought leadership events as well as networking and award shows particularly the American Advertising Awards, which entries are now open for that, for agencies and marketers who are looking to earn a little bit of metal for their hard work during what's been a really tough 2020. I'd like to remind everyone who is a member of the AAF that we have our general membership meeting November 19th. It will be virtual. Uh, you can go to baltimoreadvertising.com to learn more about that. As far as the AAFB, this is my pitch to you. Uh, this is an organization that just celebrated its 100th year anniversary. We're excited about that. We're really proud about that. More importantly though, what's happening now? Uh, it's networking, it's professional development, it's the American Advertising Awards, it's uh, job boards and the opportunity to, pro to promote your company and teach others in our community. If you are, curious about how to get started as a member, but either as an individual, as a, a gold member or a platinum member, um, please check out our website, again, baltimoreadvertising.com. And with that commercial over, I'd like to introduce you to Kara Allman. She's the Director of Programming at AAF Baltimore and also the Regional Manager at MNI. Kara, take it away. 
Thanks so much, Matt, and good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning, we are thrilled to have Matt Finelli speak. He is the Senior Vice President of Digital at MNI Targeted Media, and he has over 20 years of experience as a leader in digital media strategy. At MNI, Matt oversees uh, all of the digital advertising across platforms, and he's instrumental in the development of MNI X, which is an internal tech and programmatic platform. He also spearheaded MNI's tech stack, which houses OmniPoint, MNI's proprietary data warehouse, um, Motto, which is the OTT attribution offering, and DMM, which is the end-to-end -end system for all of MNI's digital solutions. When he is not looking after his five children, yes, I said five, and the youngest is only two months old, uh, he is an active member of several boards, including Digital Remedy, the IAB in New York, and Rutgers University's leading disruptive innovation board, to name a few. Today, Matt will discuss B2B strategies in an era of disruption. I can assume everyone on this call has never imagined that we would live through a global pandemic. And this unique time has brought us many challenges, both personally and professionally. Matt will dive deeper into how brands can pivot and something into something and try something new while enforcing brand messaging. If you have any questions for Matt, please submit them via the chat or the Q&A section and we can address them at the end. So without further ado, please welcome Matt Finelli. Thank you so much, Karen. And thank you, Matt, for that great introduction. I'm really excited to be with you all this morning to dig a little bit deeper to Kara's point into B2B strategies, specifically with what's been going on and what continues to, to occur. These are unprecedented times for sure. And I think if there's one thing that's kind of come out of this foundationally has been the need to disrupt and innovate and change the way that we do business. Right before we actually started this webinar, we were brainstorming a little bit earlier and how we all need to dig a little bit deeper how we need to look at our businesses very differently and somewhat reinvent ourselves. And one of the positives that I've learned since the beginning of this is out of every crisis really comes innovation and new ways of looking at things. And what we're gonna dig into this morning are, are some of those tactics specifically as it pertains to B2B and how we need to look at conducting our business differently than we ever have in the past. So opportunity is something that always arises during points of disruption. And as we take a look at the different opportunities that have arisen, and this is B2B organizations in different countries that have really experienced significant disruptions due to coronavirus. And some of these categories are continuing to experience very significant disruption. And the first one, which I think all of you on this call today are very familiar with, is tourism, hospitality, and the arts. Travel and tourism has been severely impacted by coronavirus. The lockdowns, not being able to travel, whether it's an airline, a hotel, CDBs, tourism boards, there's been a tremendous impact. And what I will say is each of those types of clients are looking at conducting their business very differently. And a great marketing case study that I recently just read is how Delta Airlines is utilizing content to really utilize that as an opportunity during this time of disruption in terms of ongoing communications with their Sky Miles members and how they actually are talking about disinfecting and cleaning. Personal and consumer services has also been severely impacted, whether that was going to the hair salon, to the barber shop, to getting a massage, to you know plastic surgery, there has been a tremendous disruption here and reaching out to people with a message of it's safe, it's okay to come back when it is actually okay to come back has been something that's really front and center. And as you can all see here across this percentage of respondents, you know, there's been a wide variety of disruption across a multitude of categories. And as I was meeting with someone this morning, we're starting to see these things come back and to come back in a better way. And I think it's forcing us to reinvent ourselves and reinvent our businesses. And most importantly, how we reach out to our best customers and specifically in the B2B segments, if we're trying to reach C-level executives, et cetera, we're all consumers at heart. 
And it's really having that personalized touch and figuring out how do we break through and how do we have a message that actually resonates with our best customers and who we're trying to reach. One of the ways that we've seen that is really the acceleration of digital overall. Digital interactions have become twice as important now as they were before. When we look at the period pre-COVID, which method specifically for B2B was more important to your customers? 52% of that said the traditional sales channels, right? So that was trade shows, et cetera. We've now seen that actually flip upside down. And, and to be completely honest with all of you on this call today, it pertains to our business at MI Targeted Media as well. You know, we were very accustomed to meeting with our clients in person, sitting down over things like lunches and dinners and discussing strategy and tactics. That's been completely turned upside down. Engagements such as these, which we're on right now, have become more and more important. And you can see here, 66% are now digital enabled sales interactions in terms of what that acceleration is. It's how to really utilize the power of technology to innovate and to get through to that B2B target, that business target for you, where you're going to be able to kind of break through that clutter and have a message to them that actually resonates. This is something where just like most things, because we've been thrust to do things a little bit differently, even as things change and morph and go back to whatever that new normal is, you can't really dial that back and peel it back because it's a new way of doing things. So we're gonna talk and dig a little bit deeper into some B2B marketing strategies that have worked during uncertain times. And, and let's face it, you know, right now we're talking about the pandemic and where we are. There've been uncertain times in the past, you know, such as the tragedy of September 11th, you know, swine flu, other things that have really impacted businesses. But these are the strategies that, that generally work during these times, whether it's a stock market crash, you know, a terrorist tragedy, a pandemic. First and foremost is, how do you adapt your messaging based on what's going on in the world? Having a tone deaf mentality and perception of things in a go to market definitely doesn't work. How do you engage face to face virtually? And what I will say is there was this reticence and you know, of, I don't want to turn the camera on. We experienced that in our own organization. We're doing more and more of that. And we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that. The concept of trying something new and testing something has become part of the forefront and has become more and more important. Focusing on your current customers and having a deeper, more meaningful relationship with them has always been important. It's more important now than ever before. And sharing more content. Content really is king. The value of that content, the education value to the content is extremely important. So the first part is adapting messaging. So how do you deliver messaging on a human level? And some of the techniques and tactics here that really work are, how do you make it about people and not just logos? How are you making the recipient's life or work better? From a business to business perspective, what is the value that you're bringing to another company? How are you going to make that decision maker's life and their work better, more efficient, specifically during these uncertain times? Be visually aware. Make sure your imagery reflects the new normal. And you guys probably just saw in this presentation, which was after, as we do this, and I do a lot of speaking engagements, it was prior in person across the country. And now I do a lot of these virtually as I'm doing with all of you today. Being visually aware is really important. And you'll see in a lot of our visualizations here, we're showing people out with masks on, right? That's really talking about what's the new normal and visually reflecting that. One of our pre presentations, when we initially started to do this, we didn't have imagery with masks and it was brought to our attention that it doesn't reflect the reality of today. And we needed to include that. That pertains to every business. And when you're looking at things like your social media channels and things that you're putting out there, post with a purpose. Don't be frivolous. Share substance. Understand what's going on and be in tune with that. The idea of posting frivolous things, specifically in B2B, is definitely somewhat of a turnoff. Posting with that purpose where there's either an education piece to it or there's a value to it is very important. 
So some success there with top funnel tactics, B2B companies have seen great success in marketing opportunities that pertain to awareness-driven goals. When someone has a need, how do I remain and be top of mind for them? One business that comes to mind where we've seen during this pandemic, you know, initially in the beginning was kind of the rush to, you know, some people stockpile food and specifically packaged foods. And there were some B2B clients that we were working with out on the West Coast where they wanted to be top of mind for granola companies as they started to produce and package granola bars for ingredients such as oats and nuts, et cetera. That goal of being top of mind is those procurement teams were looking at how to create these and produce a larger quantity of granola bars was really important. That should absolutely be one of the success metrics is how do you have top of mind brand recall and recognition as an organization for an awareness driven goal because you need to be top of mind. Second is how do you engage face to face and virtually and you know, one thing that I will say here, as we see with our own organization, has been this reticence to turn the camera on. And part of that is because, you know, specifically in the beginning, I would imagine for the first, you know, couple of months of the pandemic, people probably didn't get out of their pajamas, so they didn't want to turn it on. Or we have dogs barking in the background, cats running in front of the computer, kids screaming in the background, two people working out of the same house. What I will say is, that's what makes us human. And I think one thing that's really important is we are all in this together. As I am on calls and I'm doing presentations such as this one or at specific client calls, you know, that human touch and making yourself, you know, relatable is really important. And if your kid runs in or your dog is barking, we're all in the same boat. That's okay. Don't be afraid to engage face-to-face -face virtually and turn those cameras on because of what's going on in the background. What we've seen so far, B2B marketers are definitely turning to online platforms through things like LinkedIn events to generate more leads and increase ROI. Super, super important. As most events have gone virtual, participating in those is really important. For us as a targeted advertising company, we are participating in a lot of visual events. There are a lot of things that I do being on the IAB, events that I'm doing virtually. We recently just did one called the ICS Summit, which is based in Texas, where it was a great visualization and a really great virtual event that brought people together and utilizing technology to make it very human, if you will, yet doing it virtually. And as you can see here, while there's still some doubt, 60% of B2B decision makers believe that the new sales model is more effective than models that were used before COVID-19. Part of the reality there is, you know, doing events virtually are a lot more cost effective than having to do events in person per se. I truly believe there is something that's lost in terms of body language, et cetera, when you're not together in person. That being said, there are a lot of new efficiencies, and I truly believe there will be somewhat of a hybrid in terms of what events look like in the future as things get back to normal and hopefully there's a vaccine and we can get through the pandemic together. I think there's going to be a hybrid of this. Increased video consumption has grown exponentially. It's at almost a 60% increase in terms of the amount of content watched. I recently just read a stat yesterday that since the pandemic, streaming services have increased their subscriptions by 189%. This concept of engagement through video, specifically because of the interaction and the visualization of it, has become of the utmost importance. And I think when we talk about kind of B2B, right, and targeting businesses, you know, for, for what we do. Part of the challenge is the decision makers within every business, they're a consumer, they're a person, right? They're just making the decision for their business versus making that decision for their household. Understanding that and understanding some of those nuances is, is really important because when we're trying to target B2B decision makers, well, 
the foundational trifecta of what's going on in their mind is the same as in the individual consumer. And what do I mean by the trifecta of things? Well, attention spans have decreased from 12 seconds for an average adult in the United States in the year 2000 to approximately three seconds at the end of last year, which is actually, it's being disputed, but less than the attention span of a goldfish. You have that compounded with the number of choices that every B2B decision maker has, whether that's looking at a destination, whether that's procuring some type of oats, whether that's looking at plastics or technologies for their business, there's more choices than ever before. And we all have more connected devices in our house with the average household having over 13 connected devices. Video is something that really helps to break through that clutter from a visual and an engagement perspective. Really, really important, specifically because of the pandemic where we are seeing CTV and OTT executions specifically for B2B growing exponentially. It is actually one of the fastest growing segments since the pandemic has been the execution and the deployment of CTV and OTT executions, not just for consumer brands, but also for B2B. So what have we seen so far? We have seen B2B marketers reallocating their 2020 event budgets completely towards the digital space. 43% of those have invested in highly targeted digital campaigns in general, be it display, video campaigns. 40% have invested that money in webinars and digital events. 33% have put that money into search, 27% into paid social, 20% into SEO, and 17% into lead gen industry vertical websites. So those budgets, those event budgets, we have, you know, looking across a, a wide variety throughout the country of B2B marketers that we partner and work with, we've not seen them just take those budgets and say, you know, that's it. We've seen that money become reallocated into other areas that because of this age of disruption have really had a positive impact. So these are the percentages in terms of where those dollars are going. Really, really good food for thought for all of you on this call to see and get some ideas of if you do have that event money open, where are some really highly targeted places that you can put that to move the needle on your organization? Trying something new. And I, I can't stress this enough. The importance of trying something new, specifically during these times to see what will work and then to really do a deep dive into the analytics of what was done is really important. The hesitation to try something new has been really put to the wayside, if you will, with a lot of the folks that we work with across the country, specifically in the B2B space. And part of that is because I think we all recognize that we need to somewhat reinvent ourselves and look at doing our businesses and conducting ourselves in a very different way. Sales leaders should focus on providing strong digital interactions reconstructing the customer experience and positioning sellers across channels to provide continued support. Well, what does this mean? This means is as we are out there trying to sell our businesses and our companies to other businesses and companies, we need to really have a strong digital interaction. We cannot have that personal interaction where we're doing a cocktail hour after an event. There are no happy hours. There's very few and very limited lunches. We need to make sure that that digital interaction is a strong interaction, that it's meaningful, that it's providing value, that it's figuring out what was our customer's experience prior to this and how can we best reconstruct that virtually and through digital. We also need to make sure that depending on your business, across every channel within your company, how are we providing continued support? That concept of continued support has been and was growing to be very important. It is more important now than ever before because the feeling from the business of you got my company's business and now I have no support is one of the largest pitfalls that we actually see. It's the sales process is great. The business is on board and they are procuring fill in the blank from us. 
And then all of a sudden, there's no support. We don't really hear from them. If we have a problem, we're going into a large queue with everyone else. This ongoing support all the way through the different channels of the organization is really, really important. Every piece of research indicates that if you lose one of your customers, you have to spend eight times the amount of money to actually get that customer back. So it's very important to have a deep and meaningful relationship with your customers to not only continue to engage with them, but also to retain them and potentially upsell them as well. Super important. And one of the ways that we do that is really through data and targeting. When we look across all of the B2B clients that we work with and that we partner with across the country, having the ability to utilize data and targeting and what that looks like by device is extremely important. The days of casting a really wide net and just throwing something against a wall and hoping it sticks are really over. Every media plan should be steeped in data and targeting because it doesn't matter your business or any of the businesses that we work with, no one has endless amounts of money to spend on their marketing and advertising campaigns. We all need to prove the efficiency and the efficacy of the dollars that we're spending. We all have someone to report back to. Utilizing data and targeting is extremely important. And you can see here in terms of that growth and what that looks like, Specifically, when we look at mobile only and what that growth is, mobile devices are tethered virtually to all of our bodies. If we do not have our phone with us, we don't know what to do. We can't really function. It kind of rules our life. The growth there and being able to target specifically while leveraging data in terms of B2B segments to a mobile device has grown exponentially. What's interesting is we just see the total number, right, continuing to grow at just under about 295. Yet that mobile portion has really grown exponentially where we've seen just kind of that desktop only slightly decline. The power of search. And the reason why I bring this up and why this is really important is the way that I like to think about search-based digital advertising versus display video-based advertising is those display video advertising, highly targeted data campaigns are inspiring a demand where search campaigns are capturing an existing demand. And what we see here is that personalization 90% of U.S. consumers find marketing personalization very or somewhat appealing. When we are reaching out to a specific person, a highly personalized message that resonates with them is extremely important. When you add that to the timeliness of that messaging, marketers feel strongly about that, that if they get it timely and it's personalized, that is where the results are. 86% of marketers have seen a lift in business from their personalized campaigns. People want to have that white glove service. They want to feel like they are important to your business, specifically when you're looking at in the B2B segment, you know, ongoing contracts, longer contracts. It's very different than someone walking into a store and buying a box of cereal. The personalization and understanding potentially another business's challenges and how you can have a positive impact on them and what that looks like is really of the utmost importance. And we can see in the numbers, the numbers don't lie. 86% have seen a measurable lift in business when that messaging is personalized. And that's something that we all need to be very cognizant of and we need to continue to do more and more of. If we don't do this and it's just a very generic message, it has a much harder time actually breaking through and resonating with the audience. This idea of personalization isn't a new idea or a new concept. It has just become more important. Social is playing a really large role these days, more so than, than really ever before. Informing consumers through social, bio updates and sensitive messaging, very, very important for all businesses 
as you're reaching out and looking at some of your best targets, retaining your existing companies, as well as getting new ones. And that's everything from increased desktop reach to sensitive messaging based on what's going on in the world, changing bios, adjusting the creative, being cognizant of user-generated content. The impact of social in the B2B realm has grown by five times in the past two years. And when I say it's grown by five times, the amount of money that B2B marketers are spending on social platforms has grown. Every business has a social platform, right? Whether it is a Facebook page, an Instagram account, and reaching out to other businesses has become part of the table stakes in terms of B2B. The five-time increase on that, I, if I was a betting man, I would say in the next two years, that increase is going to be 10 times in terms of the amount of money that businesses are spending on social platforms. Focusing on the current customer, as I said to you guys a little bit earlier before, if you lose an existing customer, it costs eight times the amount of money to get that person back. We want to have a deeper, more meaningful relationship with our existing customers. And we all tend to find ourselves in this cycle of, we need new customers, new customers, new customers. And yes, that is very true for our businesses to grow. Yet we also can't neglect and forget the customers we have. And if anything, and actually Matt and I were talking a little bit earlier, if anything with our existing customers, we need to work harder for them now than ever before, right? Because of the challenges in these unprecedented times. You need to be present. You need to listen to your existing customers. Find out what they're doing, what they're saying, monitor their behaviors, their sentiments as it relates to your industry or brand. You can do this on some of those social media channels, right? You can do this by engaging with them and interacting with them as frequently as possible and probably in a lot of cases more frequently than you may like to. But it's really important because if we don't continue to retain our existing customers and upsell and grow them, we're caught in this cycle, quite honestly, of never being able to grow our business. And that's not a situation I think we want to be in or anybody on this call wants to be in. You have to listen to them. You have to listen to the good, to the bad, and it's not just about listening, it's you need to do something with the information you're getting. You know, I am a very big believer in personalized customer surveys. How are we doing? What could we be doing better? Recognizing that there's always room for improvement and taking that feedback and turning it into something that's actionable. You know, it's one thing to solicit feedback and get the feedback. It's another thing to actually do something with the feedback and to let your customers know that you're doing something with the feedback. You know, oftentimes we all say, yes, we always solicit feedback. And then we kind of take it and put it in the circular file. Getting that feedback, making a change based on it and communicating about the feedback that was received is really important. Doesn't matter your business or who your target audience is, people want to feel heard. And I think that's really the highlight here is listening to them. And you also need to have empathetic messaging that matters. How can we help our existing customers? You know, and one question that I always pose is, specifically during the pandemic, have you asked what's happening with your customers' businesses? What can we do to help? Could we actually offer up more products and services that could be helpful? Could we potentially offer discounted rates or added value to let them know we're in this together during these uncertain times? Are there partnerships that you can actually make for them to help them improve their products and our services? You know, making introductions and referrals, I've seen more and more of that. That's, that's grown pretty exponentially since the beginning of the pandemic because, you know, people need partnerships. They need to rely on other people. You know, the power of two, you know, everybody always says two heads are better than one. It's, it's very, very true. But I think this idea and this concept of saying and, and really living it. We are in this together. Our two businesses work together. We have a long-standing relationship. How can we help each other? How can we support each other? That's that empathetic messaging that really matters. And I would implore all of you, 
don't make this a one-time thing, right? If this pandemic has taught us anything, it's how do you keep this ongoing and to continue to have that messaging. Super, super important. And it's about sharing more content. You know, I think as people are somewhat in, in lockdown now, working from home, et cetera, they do have more time, right? That commute time is gone for, you know, my, myself and my wife, we actually live in a suburb of New York City. We live in Westchester County, you know, and, and I myself, at m and I Target Media, we have 43 offices throughout the country. I was gone three nights a week. I was generally in a plane, you know, four times a week where I didn't have as much time because a lot of time was spent commuting and kind of on the go. I am most definitely reading and consuming more content on a variety of different topics. Sharing that content from an educational perspective and a way to really resonate and break through is, is really important. And people actually have some time now where if it's important to them and it's going to improve their lives and there's a value to it, they will actually take the time to read it, even though attention spans have gone down. You know, a lot of my colleagues that I, that I speak with and on all of the different IAB boards that I sit on, being on the IAB committee, this idea and this concept of content has, has really become kind of front and center. You know, content has always been important, but specifically when we talk about B2B and having a longer sales cycle, right? The idea of content and education has become really on the forefront more now so than, than ever before because those sales channels have specifically changed. And content should revolve around the value your product or service provides to your consumers and how they're going to benefit from it. We have to talk about the features and benefits, right? And that focus needs to be on how you're going to help them. So it doesn't look like you're bragging or self-serving. Really important. You know, as we've spoken to B2B marketers across the country, again, since really the beginning of the pandemic, you know, the phone calls that happened in the beginning, really trying to shore up their accounts did come across as very self-serving and, and very bragging versus coming at it from the perspective of, I can imagine it's difficult for you. What can we do to help? That's really the place that we need to come from. And when we ask those thought provoking questions of what can we do to help, that's where we can kind of fill in with different products and services that potentially can help or an introduction that we can make that can help. Content and that very specific content is a very, very unique and good strategy in B2B specifically during this time of disruption. And what's even most important here is how to be consistent and be nimble. The concept for B2B marketers of agile marketing is something that I would say everyone needs to invest in. And really what that means is as you're running a wide variety of campaigns and you've pivoted and gone from in-person potentially to digital, and you're looking at different tactics utilizing video, and you guys take everything that we're talking about today in these five concepts and you say, okay, you know what? We're gonna test them. We're gonna try something new. Make sure you have an agile marketing strategy where you're getting back information, some data, some analytics, where you can actually pivot and change as much in real time as possible to make sure you're not wasting the coveted marketing dollars, right? And what's gonna happen is it is gonna be somewhat trial and error. You're gonna try a couple of things, they're gonna work. You're gonna try a couple of other things and they're not gonna work. And that's okay. As long as there is some data and insights behind that, right? To not repeat and potentially make the same mistakes again. Having a protocol for collection of information, whether that's you know requesting a brochure or a form fill, or capturing someone's information to have a salesperson follow up with them. When you start to get that data, you can also start to understand who's engaging with you. Why are they engaging with you? Do they look like our best customers? Maybe our best customers are actually starting to change. How do we exploit that and find more people like these folks? That is going to require you to really be nimble 
and to change some of your marketing strategy. Having a protocol in place for that, super, super important. I can't stress that enough because you want to ensure that you're not wasting any of your marketing and advertising dollars. Precision targeting is really where B2B companies should be focusing on account-based marketing. It's really a system in terms of refining who you're targeting and the messages that are being sent. Professionals today, just like consumers, are moving targets. We really need to be prepared to respond to those patterns and what's going on in working from home. I mean, as I talked to, to Kara, who's the programming director for this, you know, Working from home is a whole new reality. There's different distractions than there are in the office. You know, for a lot of folks, you know, who are in the process of homeschooling or homeschooling based on hybrid, there's a challenge there. So the target's moving a little bit more. Understanding that, recognizing that, and basing your strategy around that is really important. And looking at an account in an organization that's a prospect and a target and figuring out your marketing strategy around them and the messages that's being sent is going to help you with that personalized messaging that we spoke about because you are precisely targeting an organization. I would highly recommend that all of you, if you're not currently doing it, is look at the organizations that you specifically want to target. Put them on a target list and start to think about a protocol for messages to be deployed against each of those organizations. That messaging is gonna be really important. It's also gonna to help to keep you focused on your best prospects. We see this across the board from all different types of B2B clients that we work with. The deployment and somewhat of that logic tree of the messaging really helps to convert. We generally tend to see that the conversion rates here are over 60% higher when we're working up and down different levels of an organization when we're working on B2B campaigns with different types of messaging and targeting. So keep that in mind as you guys look at your different prospect lists. And counter-programming. This is where we're seeing as you're putting deployments out there, the consumption patterns of content, specifically video content, is very different now because there's fewer disruptions. So when we look at some of those best practices because people are basically home, for the B2B financial category, it was usually about 10 o'clock in the morning was when the majority of that type of quote unquote advertising was deployed. That's not 10 o'clock at night. Higher ed is somewhere between eight and 10 at night where it was in the overnight. Healthcare is around nine where it was in the overnight. So what I would say is depending on your business and the companies that you're targeting, whomever you're working with, Make sure that they have the research here to take a look at the changing practices of these B2B targets and when you're reaching people. Because again, you want to ensure that you're not wasting any of those coveted marketing dollars. So here's a couple of communication tips. You want to adjust and reevaluate constantly to take a look at the campaigns and content that were scheduled before the pandemic, right? What's currently running now during the pandemic how that's working for you and how you may want to pivot and change it. You want to ensure that your messaging is empathetic. You know, as I said, that the language and visuals kind of reflect the current world. <clears throat> you want to create content that's entertaining, that it educates them, that it inspires them. It talks about features and benefits. You definitely want to be able to add value by keeping your clients informed about your business, your operations, closures, policy updates. And you want to make sure that you are clearly and concisely communicating your brand's value. And what is that value that you're bringing to your customers, your current ones, and what's the value you could bring to potential and future customers as well? So it's time to get ready, get set, and go. The five things that I would leave you with is, one, adapt your messaging. Make sure you're aware of time and place and serve the messages that are meaningful to your targets and they're authentic to your brand promise. Engage face-to-face -face virtually as much as possible. Bring in that human element. Be brave, try something new, 
work with individuals for your marketing and advertising campaigns that understand how nimble you need to be and that how they also could be nimble in that pivot. Focus on those current customers, show them that you care, engage with them and engage with them in a deeper and more meaningful way than ever before. And make sure you're producing whatever content you can. Be seen, be heard, and be present. I can't stress to you all enough that during these very uncertain times, there is innovation that's happening. And understanding that innovation and looking at conducting your businesses differently will pay dividends in the future. You know, someone a lot smarter than me actually once said, the days go by slow, but the years go by fast. And if we don't start to look at our businesses a little bit differently and try new things, unfortunately, we are going to get left behind. So I would implore each of you, think about what you're doing. How's that been working? Ask some really tough questions and start to pivot and change and try some new things. So with that, Kara, I am actually going to turn it back over to you to see if we got any questions as we have uh, a couple of minutes left here. Yes, thank you so much, Matt. Uh, we actually have a few questions through the chat. Um, the first one is from our friend and colleague, Vanessa Baker. Uh, she said, good morning, Matt. I feel like the pandemic has opened the window of true global awareness and engagement on the personal and professional level. Do you think the current digital sales shift versus classic in-person sales will continue at this growth and business commitment rate beyond COVID? Or do you think it'll shift back to more traditional spending uh, rather than digital? You know, Vanessa, that's that's a great question. And I, I truly believe that we're gonna net out somewhere in the middle. I think there's gonna be some changes. I think the investment in digital is gonna continue to be there. I think the concept and the benefit of virtual will remain in certain areas and in certain places and for certain businesses, quite honestly. I do think that we are going to get back to things that will happen in person. Will as much of that happen in person when the world goes back to normal occur? I don't think so. I truly believe it is going to be a hybrid of utilizing the technology and the digital and the virtual stuff with some of the in-person things. And quite frankly, you know, I, I would say to you as someone who was a road warrior and was gone, you know, so much from, from my house and was, you know, doing speaking engagements in person, um, you know, across the country, you know, in retrospect of if I looked at the last 10 that I did, I probably could have done five virtually and five in person. So I think this concept of hybrid is probably what we're going to say. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's that's such a good point, Matt. Um, we have another question from Morgan Lambert. Um, the question is, uh, as a video professional, I know video content is key, yet how do you convince businesses to spend the necessary money for a quality video when most are trying to cut back financially? So what I would say to that, and that is actually an awesome question, so many businesses are trying to cut back and they're saying, well, can I just do like a really cheap, quick video? And quite honestly, what I would say is it reminds me very much of the dot-com boom and the dot-com bust when I first got involved in digital overall. And we got to a point in time when clients were saying, this is when most folks didn't even have a website. They were saying, you know what? Times are really tough. You know, we don't want to spend a lot of money on a website. Can't you just like put up four pages and click through? And what I always go back to is the customer experience, right? For me, you want, if you're going to spend the money to engage with someone and get messaging in front of them, you want that execution to be stellar. If it's not and you got them there, not only did you just not get a new customer, but they're going to tell five people how bad that experience was or how bad that video was. You know, a lot of times what I say to folks is if you don't have the investment and you're not ready to do it well, then don't do it at all because I don't want to waste your money. I would rather you wait to do a really awesome video execution within reason that can look really good when we get it in front of people versus 
spending a little bit of money and doing something that's lackluster, that's not going to move the needle for your business, and is probably going to, when it's in front of your targets, they're going to say, oh man, I would never work with this company because look how bad the video was. And, and honestly, I, I would lay it out like that. I think it's much better to be honest and be upfront on what that experience is going to be than to create something for the sake of creating it. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, we have one last question. So as you said earlier, Matt, personalization and content are both critical components um, to any brand's overall advertising campaign, especially now. What are some of the more unique or high impact tactics that you've seen B2B marketers execute during COVID? Are there any that come to mind? Hey, Carrie, you, you broke up on the end there. Can you repeat just the, the last part? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, no worries. Um, just what are some of the more innovative or memorable tactics you've seen marketers do during COVID? Yeah, no, that's great. Some of the more innovative things that I've done has been this concept of immersion, where there's a multifaceted and multi-funnel program and execution, where we're leveraging tactics like display, video, social, OTT, CTV, streaming audio, all within one place and where that messaging kind of follows that person around, if you will, or the household around. Because again, keep in mind, right? Those B2B decision makers are, are people. How do we, it's kind of the concept, you know, and I've been doing this for a long time of where it was like, oh, I'm going to get the C-level exec because I'm going to take an ad out in a golf magazine, right? It's not necessarily part of their business, but how am I going to inspire that demand when they're doing a leisure activity? That is something kind of that full funnel, full tactic, immersive campaign, specifically within B2B, has been really innovative. And some of those techniques and tactics, whether it's something like TV viewership targeting or running really cool OTT CTV executions, has definitely been something that's broken through the clutter where we have seen that actually work in practice. Yeah, absolutely. CTV for sure. Um, the political ads alone were uh, a lot to uh, to watch. So yes, that's an understatement, Kara. Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, all of us can probably say we're excited not to see them anymore. Um, yes. Thank you so much, Matt. This has been absolutely uh, incredible and very insightful in terms of just a lot of these different. Um, tips and, and overall uh, strategies that you've shared with us today. And thank you everyone for joining us and reach out if you have any questions and we will be emailing the presentation. We also have this recorded through the AF so we can uh, send that out after the session. Thanks again, everyone. And thank you, Matt, and have a great day. Thanks everybody. Have a good one.